in this sizing right now. Let's go back to when we talked about joists and about the allowable joist cantilevers. When we were learning about joists, we learned that, that they could cantilever up to one-fourth of their actual backspan. So, notice the beam span table, there was no variable for whether the joist cantilevered or not. So the beam span table that we just looked at is always assuming that the cantilever load is present. The engineering in that table is, is conservative to just assume that you're going to go ahead and cantilever your joist by another fourth of the backspan. So let's look at how this affects what we're doing. Going back to our design, we see here we had that 10-foot joist span, and so we couldn't get the 9-foot beam span. We could only get 8-foot 6. But if we look at how much load we're actually putting on it, we're putting on half of that 10-foot span. We're putting on 5 feet of load. However, the beam is being sized as if we were supporting another 2.5-foot cantilever beyond it. But we're not. So we are being, the beam is being undersized, or I, I guess I should say it's being oversized in the analysis we just did. Same thing's happening with the upper deck, whereas it's really only supporting four and a half feet of joist, the sizing we just did is actually for an another two and a quarter feet of joist hanging off the end. So looking at this from a side view of the dramatic effect that this has when, when you have a joist that does not cantilever, here's our 10 foot span, Half of that being five feet of joist is bearing down on our post. But we just went to that span table to try to size this based on the 10 foot joist span. And what we're actually sizing it for is another two and a half feet. That's seven and a half feet. That would be the equivalent of a 15 foot joist span with no cantilever. Look at the, the graphic below. Even if we used an eight foot joist span in the column, when we looked it up on the table, the beam would still be being sized for six feet of load, which is actually more than we put on it with a 10-foot joist span with no cantilever. So the beam span table is always being sized for the cantilever load. So if your deck is being designed without a cantilevered joist, you're actually getting a, a very oversized beam, and it might be overly restrictive in the design. So understanding this, there's another thing I'd like to introduce to you. This is not supported in the IRC. The IRC is very conservative. We have the one beam span table that accounts for cantilevers, and there's no way in the code language to gain additional span of your beam when you're not cantilevering the joists. But understanding the dynamics and how it's designed and what we just saw here, I'm speaking to the plan reviewers out there and the code officials, you might want to consider the flexibility of using the next joist span size down, like a two by or an eight foot joist span, if someone's using a ten foot joist span with no cantilever. If there's no cantilever, you're safe to go to the next size down in the joist span and be a little more flexible in approving decks. Um, there's one other thing I'll show you to help you kind of understand the math behind this, but again, this is not coming out of the IRC. This is just trying to use what we have in the IRC prescriptively to gain as much flexibility in deck design as possible. So this is the 0.67 modifier. So if you look at the top, you see what we our condition we actually have that we just are we just reviewed, a 10 foot span with no cantilever. And if we look at the bottom, we see the way the IRC table is assuming that span to be. The IRC table thinks we have this additional load out on the front that that beam is completely supporting. So in reality, this is what we're supporting. We've got a five foot load onto the front of the beam. So we'll take our span actual, as you see, I'm gonna build a formula below, our span actual and divide it in half. And that gives us the five feet in red that our beam's supporting. If we take that five feet and we translate it down to the way in which the, the table in the IRC thinks we're loading the beam, we can see that it would cover the half span as well as it would be covering that cantilever area. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna divide that by three, by a third, excuse me, by a third. Multiply it by a third, divide it by three, however you wanna look at it. And that's gonna get us back to this 1.67, one fourth of our, of our span. So then we'll take that value and multiply it by four. And now we have the joist span that the table is actually thinking that we're doing.
a 10 foot span with the cantilever on the outer side. So if we reduce this formula, we get to the span actual times 0.67 would equal the span total. And this is a way to get the maximum flexibility out of the IRC beam span table. So going back to that, here we have it where we didn't consider that we're not cantilevering that 10 foot span. And thus we're limiting our beam span to eight foot six, although we're not really loading the beam that much. So if we take our 10 foot and we multiply it by the 0.67 multiplier, we get about a six foot eight, six foot eight inch uh, reduction. So we would put in the six foot eight inches on where this table would lie, interpolate in between there, and our actual span that we would be allowed would be 10 foot three inches. So that gives you an example of how much this table is really kind of dinging you in your design if you're not cantilevering your joists. Or if you and your code official are not able to work through it the way I just explained to give yourself a little more beam span when you're not cantilevering. Okay, so to wrap that up with beam sizing, with a, with a cantilever, use the correct joist span column in the beam span table. And in fact, that's all the IRC is going to let you use, whether you have a cantilever or not. But if you can talk this through with the authority having jurisdiction, or if you are the authority, you can also consider that when there's no cantilever, you can use the next lowest column down in the joist span column. Or to even be more flexible, you could use the actual cantilever or the actual span with no cantilever times 0.67 and then use that joist span to look it up in the table. Again, those last methods are not part of the code. They're just a translation of the code for, for maximum flexibility in the design. So we hashed that beam out. We're gonna go with a triple two by eight. And based on the analysis, we just did a triple two by eight for the lower one as well. However, we gotta look over at this beam here and we have another problem. In the beam span table, there's a footnote that states beams supporting deck joists from one side only. Again, in order to produce maximum beam spans in a, in a pre-engineered table, the, the 